What if I could promise you a watercolor experience that instantly felt empowering, full of wow, and yes, of course, quickly joyful? Would you try it? Today, I'm betting on myself and my ability to give you a watercolor experience that will do just all of that, and only in minutes. Anything other than white paper for watercolor probably seems a bit odd. I mean, watercolor is sheer and needs contrast to show up, right? Well, if you watched my Muddy Strawberry video, you know that not all watercolor is indeed sheer. And that, dear friends, gives us an opportunity to get a bit creative with our paper. Enter black watercolor paper. And today I'm using Legion Stonehenge black watercolor paper. It's soft and lovely and it holds up to heavy use really well. You're probably thinking, I finally fully lost my creative mind, but I promise the sheerest of sheer watercolor can indeed work and be seen on black paper. But we have to consider three things. We have to consider layering, a bit of mixed media action, and the opacity of the pigments we're using. Now more on that later, but let's get into the painting. I stepped onto my front porch today and chose a few perfect specimens of one of my favorite flowers, the fuchsia. It's definitely not the easiest flower to paint, but the colors just felt really perfect for black watercolor paper. Let's warm up a bit on a scrap. Grab your favorite pigment. Don't worry about if it's thick enough, opaque enough. I'm using a pink from my Art for Joystick palette, and immediately I can see this paint has some creaminess. But I notice quickly as I layer more paint on, the opacity intensifies quickly. Add a little water to my brush and spread that color out to see what happens. Whatever palette you choose to use, you might want to go ahead and swatch the entire thing out on a scrap of black paper just to see where you're at with the opacity of what you're about to use. Now this is key. Remember I said earlier you want to be comfortable with a little bit of mixed media action for watercolor on black paper. So grab whatever you have. Maybe it's white gouache, maybe it's bleed proof white, maybe it's white watercolor, or maybe some acrylic you have laying around. And I want you to take a look at what happens when you dab a little bit of that into the wet areas of your swatches. Adding a little bit of white is going to be key if you really want to get intense contrast with your watercolor mixtures on black paper. And you can perfectly see that on these leaves that I've just painted here for fun. It's also a good idea to practice a little bit of lifting on the black watercolor paper to see how pulling some color off with a clean, damp brush affects the color left behind on black paper. We're probably pretty well aware at this point what happens when you lift from white paper, but the effect is really different on black. If you want a little more info on which white medium to use, I'm going to link a video below. You're definitely going to want to check it out. I would suggest pausing right now and watch it and come back. I'm grabbing that bright pink from my palette with my dagger brush, press, curved, drag, and lift fairly quickly, and then a little dab just above it. And I'm keeping that brush loaded heavily because I really want this color to show up without too many layers. I'm familiar with working with this paper, but one thing I know is that it soaks in the color pretty quickly. So as I'm adding the purple here with some downstrokes of press, drag, and a quick lift, for the bottom part of the fuchsia, I'm again making sure to keep that brush loaded with lots of juicy color. And I'm going right in now with some gesso, lightly, just a dip of gesso on the tip of my wet brush, and I'm dabbing it into that very wet purple on the page and letting it explode however it wants to. I'm going in and adding a little red cap on top of all those pinky red strokes from the beginning. Rinse of the brush, mix up some green, use what you have, use what you love. I'm using this gorgeous olive green from my palette with the tip of my dagger. I'm creating a little green cap. And again, all of my strokes here, I am laying down the color thickly. So when I say juicy color, that means about 60 to 70% pigment 
and the rest being water on the brush and you're gonna reload often. Just a quick tip for you, I'm painting this flower slightly larger than real life, but if you're a little nervous about this, I would go even double or triple real life size so you have lots of room to move. And if you're curious of the why behind painting a bit larger, I'm gonna link a video below all about painting items larger on a smaller space. So remember from earlier, painting on black watercolor paper, you have to be willing to layer, add that initial stroke of color heavily, or multiple times closely together is one way of layering, and then of course be open to mixed media, that's me dropping in little bits of gesso here and there to boost the contrast of the color on the page. And yes, the white will certainly kind of pastel down the brighter color, that's why I use the white gesso sparingly. Going in with my liner brush loaded with a little bit of green and gesso, notice I am purposely keeping gesso off of my watercolor palette because the gesso will contaminate the palette and make it really hard for you to use your colors. So use a little dish as your mixing tray for gesso. Back to my quarter inch dagger, loading that up with just a lot of juicy green and doing some press and lift, very little drag on either side of that thin stem for some leafy moments. And by varying the width and the length of these leaves, I'm getting a look that some leaves are facing forward and some are facing side view. See, I'm going back into my gesso palette and boom, going right in with a few strokes with the tip of my dagger brush. That's gonna give some detail and also some contrast and highlight. So friends, see how satisfying this is so quickly? because bright color, more opaque use of watercolor on the page, on the black page, is so satisfying instantly. Is this a traditional use of watercolor? Mm -mm. Is this a purist approach to watercolor? No, but is the watercolor vibe still very much present on this black paper? Absolutely, and that's really exciting to me, and I hope for you as well. Going in with my dagger, adding a few downstrokes with a lot of juicy red and pink mixed together on my brush, and then a dab of gesso wet on wet at the very top of that shape I just created, and then a little cap with red. The thing I love about the shapes of buds and fully bloomed fuchsia is that their structure is easily repeatable. If it's a bud, it's kind of a, an oval with a little cap on the top, and then if it's in full bloom, you've got these few sprays of one color of petal and then downward sprays of another color of petal and then you've got a colored cap and a green cap. And if you repeat that basic structure again and again, you're gonna be able to get some convincing fuchsia. So don't be overwhelmed by the wild look of fuchsia blooms. Back to my liner brush and I'm going in with some detail in the stems to connect all of these shapes, adding little caps of green with a lot of white mixed in to my fuchsia buds. I mentioned earlier too, beyond layering, beyond being okay with mixed media on your black paper, you also want to be okay with areas that are going to fade. There are naturally going to be areas with watercolor on black paper where you've thinned out the pigment so much that an area kind of fades and you see a lot of the black paper shining through. But I see that as interesting. I don't see that as a mistake. I don't see that necessarily as an area that needs more paint on it. I see that as a shadow or just a really interesting area of my painting. If you're curious about my press, drag, and lift technique with the dagger brush, I'm gonna link a video below. It's a good one and it's gonna give you a great overview of this technique. Okay, okay, let me know in comments who is in love with fuchsias just as much as I am. Give me a oh yes exclamation point if you are. And since you're already down there, go ahead and give this video a boop. Yep, 
that's a like and it really helps out my channel. I do recommend letting everything dry once you have your first layer of watercolor and your mixed media element, mine was gesso, maybe yours would be gouache or something else. Let that first layer dry. Now I'm going pretty simple today, friends. I'm not gonna lie, but let it dry. See where you're at. Maybe you need to add additional layers or maybe you're just ready for your final details. This is not a realistic detailed painting today, but I am gonna go in with some of my signature linear moments with that liner brush to finish things off. So going into the bright, bright pink with just a dab of gesso on my brush, and I'm just going to do some thin, wispy downward strokes on a few of these buds. It's a low contrast detail because I wanna preserve what sheerness I already have on the page, but it's just a little something, something that gives this painting that extra oomph of contrast that we need at this point. And friends, if you're curious about using this liner brush, I'm going to link a video below so you can check out all the wonder that is the liner brush. Okay, who is ready to chase that joy that this technique brings? Let me know in comments if you're going to give watercolor on black paper a try and what you plan to paint first. I've just got to know continuing adding some details and in the details I'm admittedly using more white than I was with the base layers in the first moments of the painting. My first moments were all about juicy heavily pigmented watercolor and now I'm mixing a lot more white into smaller amounts of watercolor because I want these details to really pop but I'm not going to overdo the details because, again, I want the watercolor personality that's still very much happening on the page to not get lost. So going into these leaves with a little bit of green mixed with a lot of white, thinned out with a decent amount of water so my brush really just flows nicely over the paper and boom, all of that beauty, all of that detail and loveliness is popping, popping heading into the purple petals here on the fuchsia. And instead of adding a, a lot of white or any white at all, I'm just really using an intense, intense load of purple on my liner brush. And I really like that. It's contrast, but it's lower contrast. And the same kind of approach in those upper petals of the fully bloomed fuchsia. Again, it's just tone on tone. It's enough of a difference to see but it's not a in your face kind of detail moment. Because remember, sometimes too much is definitely too much. And just a hint of white in that heavily loaded brush full of red and pink from my palette to add a last few little lovely details. All right, did I convince you? Let me know in comments if you thought painting on black watercolor paper was pretty darn satisfying, pretty darn quick. Now, if you don't have any black watercolor paper, I want you to try this technique next. While that paper is on order, wink, wink, and you'll be all ready to go when it arrives. Until I see you next time, dear friend, happy painting.